me just introduce Mark. How many of you have no idea who Mark Anderson is? You've never seen him before. All right, quite a few of you, 25% of you. So let me introduce Mark. He is a missionary, and his primary call, and correct me if I get this wrong any place, but his primary call began to be India, I believe. India, Nepal, Nepal yep. Um, I don't know if he's planning to share any stories or whatever, but they, they go into the heart of where they may not always come out. They, they don't always like Christians in that part of the world. But by faith and in obedience, they go in and they minister, having, having huge impact for the gospel in that area. And then it's been expanding recently into Europe, I believe, um, which Europe desperately needs move of God. They had it years and years ago, and it just hardened up, and it's like rock hard. So God's knocking on Europe again, and I'm praying that America doesn't become a second Europe. And we had it years ago, and we just go rock hard. Uh, we're headed that way too fast. So our prayer is to turn that around. But his wife is not with him this morning, but he's coming. He's going to share, and it's always a good time to have Mark and let him share what God's doing and bring whatever word the Lord has you to bring. Be blessed, man. Come. It's good to have you. Good to be back. One of my favorite churches to come to. You guys uh, always enjoy coming here, and I love Pastor Vernon Mary's heart. Um, we're contending for this nation, too, because... Uh, you know, this is ground. I'm a missionary, mainly. We Before COVID travel ban, five, six trips a year overseas to India, Nepal, Bhutan. Strictly a Buddhist nation was opening up for us. Then Corona travel ban came, closed that door for temporarily. And then uh, um, a lot of time spent in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. They printed four of my books in German and We've been in 50, 60 different churches in a five-year period, and then working, doing refugee ministry over there as well. So looking forward to getting back to that. But the thing is, if we don't contend for this nation, uh, it affects those other nations in the world. So my number one mission field is places like D.C., and in the United States to see that transformed. And I'll share a little bit about that vision here in a bit um it's really good to be back and yes we get to finally go back to india it's been over two years since we've traveled overseas but we've been doing a lot of stateside ministry and it's been really good um just contending for this nation but uh may 20th leaving for back to india and we'll be in three different states two of them uh, some of the most persecuted states uh, where there's on a daily basis pastors are getting uh, beaten up or some of them beheaded um, there's some of them being churches burned Christian women raped uh, just tremendous persecution against the Christians it's I've been going there since 86 it's the worst ever right now and uh, so we really covet your prayers as we go we need to fly under the radar <laughs> And just uh, use the wisdom of the Lord as we go. Um, but we, we definitely covet the prayers of the saints. There are, some of you receive our newsletters and our, May, and our monthly letter. Our monthly letter is on the back table. If you care to be praying and interceding for this upcoming trip, with, there's some details on that, just uh, some specifics. So we definitely covet your prayers. Um, on the table out there, I'll, I'll get this out of the way first, is... Um, we have some of our books back there. We've got 11 books out now, so I've been putting out books for quite a while, and the main purpose of these books is to equip the saints to do the stuff, you know. Um, this is a big part of what we're about, and I, I would just, I shared it last night. This is a book I put out 21 years ago, and uh, the second chapter is talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. The last two chapters talking about setting the spiritual realm for the miraculous. Um, chapter 3 is a chapter, Answers About Demons. And a lot of that came 
um, that message and, and that influence of, of just teaching these kind of things came when I lived in this area back in 19, um, from 79 to the early 80s. And from January to June of 1980, from North Branch to Cambridge, Isanti, Wyoming, Stacy, Forest Lake, I was pretty much busy casting demons out of people 30 to 40 hours a week. And I didn't sign up for that as a job, saying, okay, my job, how much does it cost? How much is it? Cast out demons. No, that wasn't the reason. But there was so much Satanism and witchcraft at that time. Anton LaVey lived in Mound, Minnesota at that time. The Anoka uh, uh, psych ward, um, state psych ward. I mean, we had people coming. And what happened is we saw so many people they come out of Satanism and witchcraft. And the demonic realm was so alive. I mean, in the stuff that they were into we were starting to see all kinds of miracles the gifts of the spirit were in operation we saw all kinds of tumors and cancers dissolve uh, we saw uh, just uh, people set free from black magic and witchcraft i mean a lot of them bizarre miracles they would be doing just through the powers of demons and stuff like that but they didn't realize what they were opening up to so I wrote about that in chapter three. I was talking to sister in the back, and she, she, she was reading it last night, and uh, um, it hit home because she remembers some of those times back in 1980 and the stuff that was going on back then. But if, if you want to know more about answers about demons, the demonic realm is, is real, people. We can't ignore it. But we have to understand that the angelic realm and that's what I'm going to talk about today is even more powerful and it's coming down it and the thing is it's putting pressure on hell and the demonic realm too so we need to be prepared understand how they operate uh, when I begin to learn about uh, just answers about demons and, and dealing with the demonic I realize that's a big part of Jesus ministry we've seen many thousands of people instantly healed over the years uh, all over the world and about three quarters of those people were healed as a result of commanding the demonic to go, the demon spirits to leave. We have to understand how they operate. We don't ignore it, but we need to take our authority, use it, and see people set free. And, and uh, there's going to be a lot of people that are coming that are going to be hurting in the days to come because of what's going on with all over the world. So that book is available back there. Um, since I was here last time, I was here about a year ago, we revised um, our top-selling book, Humility, the Hidden Key to Walking in Signs and Wonders. This is, we've almost sold out of all the, the ones they printed at Destiny Image, many tens of thousands. Uh, we've been selling this book in Germany. Uh, over, we make it available to pastors and leaders in India and Nepal. Um, and then all over the United States. So last September had some downtime, and just what I did is did a second, took basically the same stuff that was in the book before, but we added, like, what have we learned in another 11 years of teaching that stuff? Well, learned a lot about how humility is connected to the glory of God. If we want to see the glory of God, we have to understand not religious humility, but Christ-like humility it's probably the number one thing that brings the manifested presence of God down to earth, the angelic realm, miracles, signs, and wonders. We'll talk about some of this stuff, but um, this is what we see. This is what we train our pastors and leaders in, and on a regular basis, Jesus and angels are appearing in our meeting, and people are getting instantly healed. And uh, a big part of that, I believe, is understanding what it is to have Christ-like humility, not this religious humility that came from religious tradition, influenced from Greek philosophy. It's not the same stuff, and it doesn't work. Um, so I talk, we added a chapter in the back of the book um, of Jesus and angels appearing, pictures of it, of testimonies of people that had encountered Jesus face-to-face, -face, angels 
face to face and they were instantly healed or taken up into heaven and came back down <laughs> after having an encounter. Um, so another thing we've added for the time period we live in, a byproduct of Christ-like humility is courage. The German word for humility is demut. And demut, uh, a German professor told me, he was uh, taught at the German, uh, German university. He said, you know, the root of that word to, means to serve with courage. Not, n it has nothing to do with being timid and shy, and, and, but it has everything to do with like our early founders who founded this country, who had a backbone. They were humble. They weren't serving themselves. And they, they had tremendous courage to give us this great land. We need to get back to that. So if the second edition is available on the table back there, um, and, and there's some mini books back there. I'm going to share, just so you know, on Tuesday, I'm going to share from this little mini booklet called The Motivating Force of Purpose. And um, whenever we've shared that, it's really, in, in recent years, it's really challenged people to get to hear inspired visions goals purpose um, I think this mic is cutting out a little bit if you got another mic it um, so many we have some mini booklets a message I shared a number of years ago before the 2016 election I shared a message here in this church called The Damaging Effect of the Religious Spirit and Politics. We made a little mini booklet out of it because we're, we're challenging uh, the believers to get active in government. Test. Test, one, two. There it is, okay. Um, we need to contend for this nation. And, uh, you know, if we're not involved in... In, in the political realm and government, evil sets itself up and takes control of that, just like what we're seeing happening in this nation. It's kind of cool how Christians all of a sudden get in the backbone. <laughs> you know, we kind of wait. The, the communist and the Marxist, the, the atheists, they've been like over in Davos and these places, they've been active for, for decades preparing for this time. They're proactive, but many times we as Christians, we're reactive. We wait till the ship is sinking, then we get angry and mad like right now. You know, and sometimes it's almost too late. I don't think it's too late, though. I think we do need to get proactive and get involved. We need heaven invading D.C. We need heaven invading St. Paul. We need heaven inv invading Cheyenne, Wyoming, our state our state capital where I live, you know, we need heaven coming down to earth. We need Christians who walk in the fullness of the spirit, yeah. getting involved in government and politics yeah. and, and turning this nation around. Yeah. And I'm going to, um, before I get started in my message, um, this is something that the Lord's really laid on my heart is I, I'm a mission missionary to the other countries but you know what my number one mission is to affect this country because it affects Nepal it affects India it affects Germany so many countries follow the lead of what's going on in Washington DC in our country so if I don't contend for this country then it affects those countries in a negative way but if I contend we can see a move of God this is ground zero for the move of God and so Lord um, I, you know, as long as I've been stuck stateside, I said, you know what, I'm just going to, and then I'm constantly in Facebook jail, by the way, for stuff I post, Cause I, and I don't like going with hype. I'm not into the extreme, way out there stuff that sometimes the Christian right and conservatives will run with stuff that the left will put out there to see if they'll run with that stuff. and. And it makes Christians and conservatives look really foolish because they're not running with truth. They're running with hype. These, we got to get away from that stuff. We need the truth. And, um, and that's what we're going to contend for. We're going to contend for truth because they're trying to destroy 
our Christian heritage. They're wiping away our Christian heritage and trying to take it out of our schools, take it out of government so that it's erased. But people, we need to be ones that contend for the truth of how this nation was established. It was established with people that came over here to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they made a covenant with God when they landed on the shores of America. And you think that some atheist or some Marxists are going to take that back? No way. This country is in covenant with God to spread the gospel. And atheists and, and people in Davos who, globalists who want to take over this country and destroy it, you know, like George Soros who said, the only thing that stands in the way uh, of a just world system is the United States of America, and he's going to do everything he can to change it. And you can see him at work and... and and, and, um, and he's, he's an atheist who hates God, hates Christians, and hates everything America stands for, yet he's so influential in our government, especially with a lot of Democrats, it's sad to say, you know, who are influenced by this man. Um, so beginning of the year, I'm talking to one of my friends up, who's very active politically as well, another Christian brother up in Ottertail, Minnesota. And we're visiting, and I'm saying, man, you know what, with not being able to go overseas, I, I, and we need to contend for this nation, all this stuff's going on. Maybe I need to start writing some more stuff. He says, no, Mark, you need to start doing a video podcast. And he started just, and I said, you know, that's, where do I get a lot of my information? I watch a lot of podcasts. You know, I want to be aware of stuff that's going on. And, and then I want to zero in on the podcasts that are, you know, the ones that are getting stuff done. They're not way out there, you know, taking people way off on a bunny trail, you know. But I, I, I want to say, what, what, what are the effective ones? You know what? And he kind of stirred me up to start doing that and challenged me to start doing that. And I'm not very tech savvy. Long story short is... Within a day or two, I'm saying yes, and even got the name, Contending for the Nation, for this podcast. And then the Lord started bringing the right people around. Uh, I got a wonderful video editor who lives down in Alabama, good brother, who's put stuff together for us. He's, he understands that realm, which I don't. <laughs> uh, I got another brother who's a professional monster truck announcer. Um, had a recording studio in Nashville. He had announced all, a lot of the big rock and roll concerts and country western concerts that were coming into Nashville. Has done commercials for Exxon. He said he would do, be my announcer for it. So tell you what, let's uh, show you guys what we've rolled out for the intro and the outro. And I'm just looking for some spare time and I might have it on Monday in my hotel room here to finally work on a podcast. I brought all the equipment, the green screen, all that stuff, and uh, hopefully get some time, do my homework a little bit, and then we're going to talk about contending for the nation. We'll talk about stuff like Great Awakening. How did a Great Awakening take place? A lot of it had to do with affecting government and politics, people. But also I want to talk about the stuff that I'm in Facebook jail for. I'm tired of being censored by Facebook. And, and I'm probably going to upload this stuff to Rumble because I don't think YouTube will like some of the stuff that I share. So I'll probably be censored. But uh, we're going to spread truth. So go ahead and let's, let's roll those t that intro and outro here. Let people see what's, what we're up to. As darkness permeates our nation, seeking to erase our godly heritage, we resist the lies and censorship, and we passionately pursue truth. And the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You're watching Contending for the Nation with Mark Anderson. In the words of Edmund Burke, the only thing necessary for the triumph of this evil is, the is for good men to close. do nothing. We must contend for truth. If we don't contend for truth, we lose our freedom. Benjamin Franklin said those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. 
You've been watching Contending for the Nation with Mark Anderson. If you've enjoyed this podcast, share it with others and spread the truth. For more information about today's show and contending for freedom, go to markandersonministries.com and find the truth. All right. So I covered your prayers as we uh, launch out on that. And out on the table, uh, we have a sign up uh, for our magazines. If you want to receive our magazines and our mailings, um, you can put your physical address, but also your email address. We're going to let everybody know when these podcasts are up and running. Uh, we'll upload them to our website where they can't pull them down. And, uh, um, but by email, we'll alert our email list. So if, if you're interested in checking this out, uh, sign up. Well, enough on the announcements, and uh, you guys ready to get in the Word? I want to talk. Um, I want to talk to you about um, some. You know, I was we. My wife and I were traveling. Our first meetings were in Arizona in January. The first meetings of the year, and uh, I was headed down there, and we've been sharing a bunch. Um, from my book, the, the Influence of Greek Philosophy on Western Christianity. A lot of Christians don't realize how, how much this is affecting our nation. And uh, not only that, the great hindrance it is to signs, wonders, and miracles in North America and Europe. It's, it, it's not a mindset in Asia and Africa. It's not a mindset that they have on the Indian reservations where the... God, there's an open heaven where miracles, healing, signs, and wonders take place in these places because they don't have that influence. So I was thinking, okay, I'm going to share on that. In, I had a three-day meeting in Phoenix. was our first set of meetings. And I'm thinking I'm getting prepared. Um, we're, we're driving down there about halfway, just south of Salt Lake. We pull in for the night. Middle of the night, I get up. And Holy Spirit lays on my heart, I want you to share on how the angelic realm will be more active in 2022. And it wasn't even a message on the horizon or I'm on my radar, you know. I mean, we see uh, a lot where, gee, I don't see it, by the way. Uh, the Hindus and Muslims and people attending our outreaches, they're seeing Jesus and they're seeing angels. And, but I'm not seeing the effects that come up and share what happens after Jesus appears or angels appear. And it's on a regular basis ever since 2007. Um, this kind of stuff is happening in our outreaches, especially in India and Nepal. Um, but I believe it's time for that kind of stuff, an open heaven, right, in the United States of America. But when we've got to deal with some of this mindset. I'll share some of that stuff. But I... The Lord laid on my heart, okay, first night you share uh, how the angelic realm is going to be more active in 2022. That's the message he put in my heart. So just got the message prepared. I ended up sharing that. And while I'm preaching, one of the guys sitting in the second row, he sees an angel standing next to me in gold. This angel is in gold and is standing right next to me. The lady sitting next to him all of a sudden felt like somebody brushed up against her, but there was nobody there. <laughs> um, and then there's another lady that came. She came out of Satanism and witchcraft, and she was married to a Hindu, lived over in India for a short time. Um, and she had just come to the Lord a year before, a year earlier, and started coming to that church a week before we came. And so she was pretty messed up, a lot of demonic things and and just even her revelation of god uh, wasn't you know she needed to understand the grace and the love and the mercy of god uh, and sunday morning during the worship all of a sudden she's translated to heaven and she sees the throne room and she has an experience seeing worship at the throne room of god and then comes back down and tells us, and she was one transformed lady when she came back down from that experience. But I do believe, people, we're, we're entering into a season where the angelic realm is going to be more active. 
And part of it is, is we have to deal with getting rid of this Western mindset that separates the invisible realm and the visible realm. That's the, the biggest thing that came out of Greek philosophy. Plato taught it. Uh, these Greek philosophers taught it that there was a distinct separation between the invisible realm and the visible realm. And, and, uh, and in Greek philosophy, the focus was on the spiritual realm, that the spiritual realm they believed had preeminence over this physical realm to the point that it's immaterial. You just focus on the spiritual realm mostly. Well, bring that mindset into Christianity, it's not so good because Jesus never taught that there was a distinct separation. They had a hard time. Greek philosophy and philosophers had a hard time comprehending how could a God from the invisible realm, the spiritual realm, come to this lesser realm, this immaterial realm. That's not possible. It's, it is possible because the two realms are connected as one. Why do miracles and healings... I mean, just undeniable miracles and healings flow so freely in Africa and Asia and even on our Native American Indian reservations is because there's no dividing these two realms. We've been taught since we got into grade school to separate the two realms where we either focus on one realm or the other, the spiritual realm or the physical realm. If you're just focused on the spiritual realm only, it's called Gnosticism. If you're just focused on the physical realm only, and, and it's called agnosticism. I mean, it means a, an agnostic is somebody who says, maybe there's a God, maybe there's not, it's not a big deal. My focus is just the physical realm. The thing is, the two realms are connected as one, and we have to operate with that mindset that these two realms are connected and that heaven is invading planet Earth even right now. And why do you think we're seeing the things that we're seeing in this country right now uh, where the demonic is, I mean, it's so blatant. CRT, what's going on with Disney just lately, um, pushing perversion on our children, um, um, things with even like the, the vaccines, I mean, giving it to our children, give them a donut and we'll give them a shot, you know, and I mean, the, the stuff that's being forced on, on this country, we look back and said, I never thought I'd see a day like this. But it's, what's going on is hell is raging, people. And the thing is, when the coronavirus travel ban came, so many people were just focused on, oh, man, look at all these bad things that are happening. And the focus was strictly how things are falling apart because they're so, that's somebody that's so focused on the physical realm, including Christians. What we don't realize if we don't, we're not connected to both realms, is heaven's coming down. It, heaven's invading planet Earth, people. The angelic realm is coming down, and hell is feeling the pressure. They know their time is short, and that's why they're raging to try to stop this. But if we could only see what heaven is up to at the same time, all hell is breaking loose, we would see, man, we're on the verge of a great awakening. We literally are on the verge of a great awakening, and God's getting ready to move like never before. Do you know when angels, angel appeared at the time of Jesus' birth, the angel said, uh, I believe it was to the shepherds, fear not. I, got, I have some good news to bring to you. And do you realize in the Bible, there's 365 fear nots in the Bible, one for every day of the year. That message that comes from the angels is fear not. You know why? It says in Romans 8, 31, if God be for us, who can be against us? There's more to us than meets the eye. When you're active confessing Jesus and sharing his name, like it says, Jesus said in Luke 12, verses 8 and 9, he says, if you confess me before men, I'm going to confess you before the angels of God. You deny me before men, I'll deny you before the angels of God. 
If we're actively involved confessing Jesus and sharing the good news of the gospel, there's more to us than meets the eye. Some Christians, though, they've got angels ready to move, and they're unemployed. They're waiting to be employed. It's time you loose those angels. It's time that the angelic realm becomes active in your own life. And this is what we want to talk about. So the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Let's just talk about what the ministry of angels are and then share some testimonies about that. First of all, the angelic realm in the founding of our country was very active. Did you know that? I'll give you an example. There, uh, during the French and Indian War back in the seven, this is about 1755, there was a young colonel, and he had 100, uh, 100 soldiers behind him, and they marched along with the British, and they were fighting in the French and Indian War. They were headed to what was called, uh, what would be a fort in, in modern-day Pittsburgh, and they were headed through, you know, through the woods and open fields and stuff like this, and this colonel warned the British we can't be doing this or what's going to happen is we're going to get slaughtered, you know. I mean, but the British, what does this young upstart know? He doesn't know anything, you know, and they didn't listen. Well, what happened is the French had Indian snipers who were deadly. I mean, they, they knew how to shoot, and their thing is to wait behind these rocks and in the hills, out, you know, and then wait for the British and the Americans to come marching through this opening and then open fire on all the mounted officers. Make sure to shoot every one of them and kill every one of them and it'll be total confusion, chaos, and it'll be a massacre. Well, their strategy worked. As soon as these guys came into the open field, they started shooting and they shot every mounted officer. And even this, this colonel that I was talking about, he's on this horse. His horse gets shot out from under him. He gets on another horse and keeps riding. And this Indian sniper kept shooting at him, but he never dropped. Well, word got back to the fort, total massacre, and it was. The only ones that survived was this young colonel and his his hundred guys, somehow they were able to, to escape, and they didn't know, but nine days later, it shows up in this fort, and everyone was surprised. How did they survive? And this young colonel pulls the vest off. He was wearing a vest, and I can't remember if it, that vest had either four or nine bullet holes that had gone through the vest, but not one penetrated his body. And uh, the greatest preacher in those days was a preacher by the name of Samuel Davies. And he began to share of God's intervention. This colonel said, I'm alive by the hand of providence. I'm here in the land of the living because of the protection of God. And Samuel Davies began to preach that from the pulpit and the first great awakening took place on the shores of America in 1755. And, uh, you know, it was years later, this Indian sniper, he wanted to meet this colonel. You know, the, the French and Indian War was over. In fact, the French were fighting against the British. With, with, and uh, he wanted to meet this young colonel. And here's what he said th about this young colonel. This is the man that cannot die in battle. And someday he'll lead a great nation. Well, that young colonel's name was George Washington. And a lot of people say George Washington was a deist, similar to agnostic, somebody. Maybe there, there's a God, maybe there's not. That doesn't concern me. Well, I want to tell you, deist and agnostics are not given to heavy prayer and intercession like George Washington did. You ever notice that famous painting? And I mean, and they're trying to wipe away our history by calling him a deist. What was he doing at Valley Forge then? He's going out at Valley Forge in 1777, um, and, and there's that famous painting of him. Somebody caught him in the woods. 
He's bowed and praying next to his horse in the woods, praying for God's intervention in the Revolutionary War. And there was miracle after miracle. If you read about what happened at the Battle of Long Island, if you read about how they crossed the Delaware when all odds were against them, that was their last opportunity to turn the tide of the Revolutionary War when they crossed the Delaware on Christmas night. And the intervention of... I mean, God's intervention on our nation to give us the freedom we have today. But one of those times when he was at Valley Forge, he asked, he asked his people, to, you know, his soldiers to leave him alone. He was going to go into his, his tent and pray and, and just wanted, you know, some privacy. And this is written in the Library of Congress. An angel appeared to him. And it's in the Library of Congress. This angel appears to him and said there'll be three great perils that'll happen in America and the Union will be saved, basically told. First great peril, he shows him what was happening. This angel shows George Washington what would happen to the United States. And the first peril he saw was the Revolutionary War, which they were in the midst of. The angel showed how they'd come out of it and the Union would be saved and, and, we, and America would get its freedom. The next peril, the second peril showed him, described perfectly exactly what happened in the Civil War in the 1800s. And said, the angel said, the Union will be saved. Men will come, will throw down their arms and they'll come back together. Brother fighting against brother will, will come back and, and the Union will be spared. It will come back together. And he said the most dangerous peril would be the third peril. And he describes what would happen basically um, in this nation. Uh, he described how their cities, he, sh he saw cities burning to the ground. He saw, what he saw was a dark cloud come over the, I believe it was the Atlantic Ocean. It came from Asia and it came from Africa and it rolled into America and, it, and there was a red, some kind of like almost describing like a demonic spirit, a red, some kind of red light or something in the midst of that dark cloud that would envelop America. And the angel said this would be the most dangerous peril America would face. And it would look like all hope is gone. What kind of day do we live in? <laughs> Where people have been getting hopeless and discouraged. Well, Lord, what about this election fraud? What about no, there's no just, I mean, there's a lot of exposure, but where's the justice? Our DOJ, our CIA, our FBI, Attorney General, it's all been hijacked. You know, and, and there, where's the justice? You know, we keep crying out, Lord, let, now that you've had all this exposure, Lord, bring about the justice. And we get little, you know, a little, little bit of justice here and there, but a lot of people become hopeless, a lot of Christians, a lot of conservatives. And in this vision of George Washington, check it out. Um, Google it online. It's in the Library of Congress. Um, and finally, when all hope looked like it was gone, it didn't look like anything was going to turn around, all of a sudden it said a trump or a trumpet. I can't remember. Trump or a trumpet sounded, and all of a sudden that darkness over the land of America shattered into like millions of pieces and the sun came through and the union was saved i believe people this is where we're at right now we're on the verge of a great awakening and see that's why you got to stand up and fight you got to contend you can't just you know like school board go, mothers going to school boards right now are the 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 uh, Biden administration is targeting them and telling the attorney general to go after mothers who attend school board meetings, like my daughter-in-law, my son down in uh, the uh, Waconia area where they, they live. They, they had to deal with some issues at the school board and about 200 of them parents, angry parents, showed up at the school board and said, no, you're not going to mask our kids. No, you're not going to do teach this. And the school board backed off. 
Why? Because people are getting a backbone that never had a backbone before. We're on the verge of a great awakening. The angelic realm is coming down, people, and hell is feeling the pressure. Let's stay the course. Amen? Amen. Psalms 91, verses 9 through 12, very popular scripture that was been read a lot, especially when the corona travel ban took place and these lockdowns, a lot of people were turning to Psalms 91. Let's look at this. Psalms 91, verses 9 through 12. If you have your Bibles. Praise God. Psalms 91, verses 9 through 12. It says, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor plague shall come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. It says here, no sickness or plague will come near your dwelling. My wife and I were claiming that scripture a lot. And, uh, you know, we're also putting a, a strong emphasis on communion during this time. If we understand what communion represents, the shed blood of the lamb that protects from the death angel and, and, and protects, forgives our sins. Then you got uh, the bread, which represents the broken body of Jesus. By his stripes, we are healed. And then you put Psalms 91 with that. In three years, I haven't even had a cold or a sore throat. I'm not vaccinated. <laughs> and uh, I haven't. Well, social distancing, we, we practice that a lot in Wyoming where we live. That, that's been going on for hundreds of years. So that was nothing new. <laughs> but we weren't into mask wearing. We weren't into uh, most of <laughs> people in Wyoming were not vaccinated. And yet, I, have, I've never had, I never had the coronavirus. My wife ended up getting, just as we were heading to Arizona, she started, she, she got the effects of the coronavirus, it looked like. She lost her taste and smell. She just kept pushing through it. Instead of running five, she usually runs five kilometers each day and then is in the gym lifting for at least an hour and a half on top of the running. So she had to cut that back to maybe three kilometers and only an hour and a half workout instead and because she was getting a little tired. But she pushed through it and she's fine, you know. Has uh, also now has the, uh, what do you call it, the antibodies, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, the Lord helped her through that time. But for the most part, we, we claim these promises and they're effective. You know, what stirred us up, especially about um, communion, I, when we were in India last time, we, we visit the end of the trip, we were in this one state um, and, and we're visiting my mother-in-law in Agra and we were ministering in some of the churches. But then uh, while we were there visiting our mo my mother-in-law, her maid comes in. Her maid was a Hindu and she was sick she came to work one day this is probably the summer of 2019 and she was sick and and my mother-in-law said let me pray over you she prayed over instantly healed and she said what is that you know she said that's jesus and shared the gospel with her she received christ as her lord and savior her son she led her son to the lord she tried to do it with her husband uh he wouldn't have anything to do with jesus and um persecuted her actually for uh, putting faith in Christ so it got a little rough um, but while we were there um, Jesus appears to this maid in the middle of the night and she comes the next morning and says last night I had a visitor in a white robe I know it was Jesus he put his hands on my shoulder and said everything will be okay and then I, said, I asked Sharmila, I said, well, ask her, uh, did, he, did he have nail prints on his hands? You know, I'm just curious, you know. She said, no, not there, right here. 
she saw she saw the nail prints of Jesus after we left on a quite often Jesus would appear in the middle of the night and just comfort this this new Christian who couldn't even read my mother-in-law had to teach her the Bible because she can't read um, but Jesus would appear Jesus would teach her the Bible um, she she come to work and she'd tell my mother what was happening. And my mother said, what? You mean Jesus is uh, appearing to you and sitting on your bed almost, almost every night? She said, yeah, doesn't he do that for all Christians? Come and sit on their bed? I mean, she had no idea. She just thought it was a regular thing for Jesus to come and sit on the bed once you gave your life to Jesus, you know? And then the corona travel ban came into effect, and, and it was really bad in India. They had a... A complete lockdown where you couldn't even come out of your house for a, for a week and people were starving to death um, it was nasty and she was a little afraid my mother-in-law just comforted her and then in the middle of the night here comes Jesus he brings her a cup with something red in it said drink this and everything will be okay he served her communion he had no fear after that long story short Jesus told her at times to pray for neighbors who like one elderly lady who was laying in her bed days from from passing into eternity she lays the Lord told her to go back and pray over it and she's healed and the daughter comes and was all angry at this maid how why did you what did you do to my mother she's up serving us food she she's completely well now did you use black magic she said no that was Jesus and and shared Jesus and she received Christ her husband has come to Christ since I mean this lady is God's using her. so the angelic realm is very active you know what it stirred us to do when we heard about this in the middle of coronavirus you know Jesus serving her communion my wife and I started partaking it and tr and understanding the power behind communion not just some ritual that we go through and, and, the, and it's kept us safe and healthy during this whole time there's power in serving communion. Amen? Amen. Um, Psalms 34, verse 7 says, the, an the angel of the Lord encamps round about those who fear him and delivers them. You know, your angels, you have angels that are posted by you. When you, it says that in, in Hebrews 1, 14, that angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who are heirs of salvation you're an heir of salvation ministering spirits the angels are sent to be by your side to protect you it says they encamp around about the righteous deliver them from trouble I remember um, there was a time a season in my life um, where I was uh, a single parent uh, and before I be I had gone through a divorce in 88 and for and was single um, and I was really my my ex ended up moving out to New York State and got him and had a boyfriend and it wasn't the best situation they didn't want me to see the kids but I I got pressure put on by the courts that I had joint joint custody to come out there and see them so I went out there on a trip to New York I was living in Colorado at the time and I drove out there stayed with a friend just south of Buffalo out in the country and uh, went and got my boys and and uh, brought them back to where I was staying and we got back late in the middle of the night probably after midnight and we hopped into bed and and boys are sleeping in one room I sleep in another room in the middle of the night my three-year-old gets a visitation an angel walks through the wall through the window comes right into the bedroom and right up to my son's bed and my son's having a conversation what are you doing here he says I'm here to protect you then I'm gonna go check on your dad afterwards and the next morning those boys told me about the abusive situation abusive situation they were in and it was not good and they were telling me not to, to send them back and so I ended up packing the van and heading back to Colorado ended up filing a court case back there and my lawyer after we're going through this long court case says it doesn't look good well long story short he's a mighty warrior I ended up with so 
being granted sole custody of those boys. And I raised those boys until I, by myself, until I got remarried six years ago, to, to my, or six years after that, uh, to my wife, Sharmila. And, uh, but it started out with angels coming and saying, I'm watching over you, I'm protecting. What great comfort for my little three-year-old to know that there was an angel there to comfort and protect him. Uh, there was a time my wife and I, Sharmila, and we were newly married, and we were doing some ministry. We, we didn't have a whole lot of money in those days, so we, we drove some real beaters. And we were, we were driving from, from Kalispell, Montana, where we lived, down to Denver to do some ministry. And uh, we were just south of Buffalo, Wyoming, on the interstate. My wife was driving, and all of a sudden, probably 75, 80 miles an hour, um, all of a sudden, it felt like, I don't know if the steering column collapsed or a flat tire or something. It just all of a sudden, quickly, just went boom like that. And the car flipped over, and we went rolling through the medium and ended up facing the oncoming traffic the other way. The roof was completely crushed. People saw that coming up the interstate, and they thought for sure we were dead. I got out of the car, and uh, my wife was still there, and, and, uh, and she had a, ended up having a few stitches, like three, four stitches, a sprained ankle. I had the roof cave in on my head, and so I could feel the pressure right here and my lower back. The ambulance came, got us, took, it to the ho took us to the hospital. They released us and brought us to a motel. And I just told my wife, uh, here, why don't you pray over me? My, uh, uh, and she sits me down. My leg is probably one leg about two inches shorter than the other leg. She just commanded to come back up, completely healed. Then we made it down to Denver, <laughs> had our meeting. Lord bless us with another vehicle. Uh, but, you know, while we were going through that, I mean, literally, end over end, we're flipping, and there was total peace. It was like, what was you know, what was it going to be like when you're almost, you're near death? What would it be like? And it was just total peace. And the Lord brought us out of that. No, no permanent injuries or anything like that. The angel of the Lord. Uh, a number of years later, my wife was pregnant at the time. And uh, we have a daughter. Her name is Charisma. And it was a number of years later we're traveling through Montana. We're doing some ministry um, in northern Montana where we had, used to, we had lived before up in that area. And it was right in the middle of a nasty snowstorm, an ice storm. I remember we, we slid off the road in Bozeman, Montana. <laughs> we had four-wheel drive, got back up on the freeway and kept driving. Finally, we're getting near Butte, Montana. It's clearing up. It looks like it's nice and picking up speed again and, and we shared with our daughter I don't maybe she's eight nine years old I don't remember how old she was at the time but we're telling her what happened in Buffalo Wyoming how the Lord protected we're telling her about Psalms 91 the angels of the Lord and camp round about the righteous and how he delivers them from troubles we're we're sharing with her the power of the testimony and we come down out of the mountain pass into Butte and all of a sudden there was a huge patch of black ice on the freeway. We hit that black ice right after telling her that story, and we're spinning in circles, totally out of control on the freeway. There was no semis nearby, thank God, but we're totally spinning out of control, just almost going dizzy, you know, and finally it ends up on the side of the road right next, about one foot from hitting a post and doing some good damage to the vehicle. We didn't hit it. Got back out and <laughs> drove again. So that was a good learning lesson for our daughter, that how the angels protect. But I, I wouldn't advise, you know, I, it's nice if you don't have to go through that kind of stuff too. But he, praise God, he, he protects, he watches over. Amen? Psalms 103, verse 20 and 21. Let's read that. Psalms 103. And here's the thing, people. Um, we talk a lot about the angelic realm, the invisible realm, and the visible realm in this book. Plato and Aristotle 
taught that there was a distinct separation between the invisible realm and the visible realm. And uh, one of those who was a Greek scholar was a guy by the name of Augustine. Anybody ever heard of Augustine before? Very popular in the Catholic Church circles. He came around in 400 AD. He was a Greek philosopher. He actually believed, and I, I might butcher the way I say this, but uh, if um, he was into a belief called, I, it's something I do like mechanism. It's in my book. And he, he believed that there was two gods, one God that did evil, one God that did good. When he became a Christian, <clears throat> He turned away from the belief in two gods to just one God, and he believed one God did both good and evil. And he brought that into Western Christianity. He had a saying like this. He said, everything that happens in this life, and he could find scriptures to take this stuff out of context, and I don't have time to get into all that. We do in, in the book to refute that. But he said, everything that happens in this life is the will of God. He said, don't question it. Don't say it's a fallen angels or the will of man. It's the will of God. So no matter what happens in life, you're just supposed to accept it as the will of God, both good and evil. That's not true. And that, and he's, uh, one of the quotes that they make is out of Romans 8, 28. Um, and all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Well, Paul's not, if you take that scripture just and take the middle of that scripture, all things work together for good to them that love God, you can come up with that doctrine. But if you read the thing in context, that's not what the Apostle Paul says because all things do not work together for the good. He says, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. What if I, as a Christian, don't want to fit into his purpose? Well, all things are going to work together for my good? No. And what was it at the beginning of the verse? It starts with an and. And all things work together for good. That means, what were the prior verses talking about? Allowing Holy Spirit to pray through you and intercede through you in tongues, in the Spirit, he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And then what happens? And all things will work together for good. When we're allowing Holy Spirit to pray through us according to God's perfect will, guess what? All things will work together for good. Even bad things can work together for good. But to say at face value, God does both good and evil is not true. There's a lot of Christians they're submitting to wrong doctrine. The Bible says, James 4, 7, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. There's a lot of Christians that are submitting them. I'm saying Christians that are submitting to the will of the devil and resisting the will of God because of that mindset is God does everything. And you come along and you tell them, no, you can resist. You have authority, you know, because if you believe that, you're not going to do anything to resist you're not going to rate you're not going to use your god-given authority we talk about that and the authority given to mankind um, to understand these things but a lot of christians are submitting to wrong influences because of wrong teaching and then you come along and you tell them they get angry and upset i've run into those another person so what happened is augustine he was a Greek philosopher, heavy into Neoplatonism. That's the reworking of Plato's idea. And that's, he believed in the division between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. He brought that into Western Christianity. Who, what other Western church leaders did Augustine influence? John Calvin, anybody heard of Calvinism? Martin Luther, anybody heard of Lutheranism? <laughs> Some of our main Western church leaders are greatly influenced and steeped in this tradition here. And there, I, I really share how we need to get away from that mindset because the, Jesus taught how the two realms were connected as one. And, and if we understand those things, then the angelic realm becomes more active. Jesus appearing. And we start seeing those kind of, same kind of things that they see in India and Africa. It's not like 
God's respect of persons. Oh, these people are so poor over in India and Africa. I've heard people make excuses why he doesn't do the miracles like they over in Africa. No, we see the same miracles right here in the States. Angels appearing, uh, people getting delivered. There's many times uh, in our meetings where we've we've had people we've prayed for people and they feel uh, like a mass prayer we're not even praying pray, laying hands on them but in a mass prayer environment because thousands of people are coming forward for healing like in india or nepal and they can feel a hand go into their body and rearrange body parts or they feel an invisible hand go into their body and and they say they describe it like rips out the sickness there's a time I was in Alberta, Canada, on a Native American Indian reservation, and we're praying over one, uh, people on one end of the line. Um, I was praying over one young man who was manifesting with the demon of suicide, and we, we cast that demon out of him. On the other end was a lady sitting who had a severe hernia, and all of a sudden, she felt a hand go on her body and it, she had a severe hernia, and it rearranged her body parts. And within one month, she lost 55 pounds after being instantly healed that night. Because the hernia was completely gone. But she was wondering, who touched me? Who did that? I'm on the other end praying. And it was an angel in that meeting. They're here right now. They're here right now. There's people going to get healed today, and it's the presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the angelic realm. Let's, um, before I read Psalms 103, 20 and 21, another just side note. You know, there's a lot of Christians that talk about angels. And, you know, especially after the Toronto blessing where angels were appearing to people and Jesus was appearing, but what happens is sometimes Christians try to work this stuff up. And I tell you, if you try to work this stuff up, you deaden the effect of the move of the Spirit. If you're trying to work this up through your own glory because you want to be recognized or you're trying to hype this thing up. We had a church in our town, doesn't exist anymore, and, and the pastor and wife ended up um, going through a, a divorce as well. I mean, it, but... They would, they really wanted to be seen and recognized. And they would be in church services and they're always taking pictures of the lighting and they would see these orbs. And they say, see, look at the angels are appearing. And they were so desperate, I think, to say, look how God's moving in our church. And, and people running around acting like angels were appearing because there was some distorted thing coming through the camera lens. We've got to stop with that because when we start, what happens is it when the real thing happens, people won't respond to it because we've, we've cried wolf too much. And the glory of man shuts down the move of the Holy Spirit. So we don't have to work up the angelic realm. We don't have to work being slain in the spirit. Some people think, man, they, they feel like they got to help God a little bit, you know. Let's not give in to that kind of hype. This is, if we're going to see the glory of God manifest, it has to be for His glory, not for our glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Psalms 103, verses 20 and 21. Let's read that. Well, let's start with 19. The Lord has established His throne in heaven. That's the invisible realm. His kingdom rules over all. That's the earthly realm here. The Lord is connected to both realms. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength to do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you host, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. See, the, they ex, the angels are, the Bible says they excel in strength, hearkening unto the voice of his word. When you begin to confess his word, they're responding to that word. There's times where I've had to cast demons out of. I remember one time I was between Estes Park 
in Boulder, Colorado, up in the mountains. It's probably about 11, 12 at night, pitch black except the full moon. And I was with this one person who had, in the earlier in their life, tried to commit suicide a couple times. And we, we were praying deliverance. I was coming against that spirit of suicide. And all of a sudden, it manifested in this person. And this person's just screaming at the top of their lungs. And they're coming after me, ready to just charge after me. And, and I said, Lord, send angels right now. Lord, send an angel right now. And, 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 and I said, angels, force that person's hand to go down on the roof of the car. I mean, I didn't have any help there other than Holy Spirit and some angels. That works good, though. And I'm saying, angels, just force the hands to go down. And all of a sudden, the person, I mean, they're just screaming. The person described it like they're in the back of their head watching this thing take place. But they were at peace that God was going to set them free. And I'm commanding that spirit to go. And the person said, literally, that spirit inside wanted to rip the eyeballs out of my eye socket. I mean, that's what, how this person described it. And I'm commanding that demon to go. And the person's screaming at the top of their lungs. And their hands are down on the roof of the car. And I said, I even said, try to move those hands. <clears throat> Couldn't even move them. You know why? Angels were holding that person down. I needed some help. Happened one time in Wyoming, Minnesota, too, to a lady that was manifesting and charging us in a meeting in the Wyoming Community Center. I just said, Lord, send angels. And all of a sudden, the person's stiffening up, and, and we command those demons to go. That one took a few hours, though. <laughs> that woman got set free, but, but uh, had some, a lot of demonic strongholds. So, but angels are real. They're there. It also says in... In, in uh, Hebrews 1, 7, that angels are ministering their flames of fire. He set his angels as flames of fire. There's times when we've been in meetings in India. And I remember one time I was in the Himalaya Mountains where we're headed here in a few weeks. We'll be right back in those mountains. This is the, the Hindus believe their gods live in the Himalaya Mountains. <clears throat> And we've seen thousands of people come to Christ. Jesus appearing, angels appearing. And one of those times, my wife wasn't with me, but she had a dream in the middle of the night. She saw flames of fire all over those mountains where we were, like just covering the mountain. Kind of reminds me of Elisha when, he, when the Syri I think the Syrians were coming and they were totally outnumbered and Gehazi was was afraid and Elisha says, prayed and said, open his eyes. And what happened? He saw flames of fire, chariots all over the mountainside. He says, there's more than us than of them. In fact, angels outnumber demons two to one, people. We win. Amen? And these flames of fire, what happened is in those meetings, we, Jesus was appearing. Angels were appearing. There was people that literally saw the theater where we're holding this meeting. They saw the tops of the roof on fire. And it was the presence of God. Let's believe for this kind of stuff right here, right now. Amen? So, um, last scripture I want to share with you. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 22, because I believe this is prophetic for 2022. Second Chronicles 20 verse 22. Um, you know, in 2007, I had the privilege of going and hearing Randy Clark and Bill Johnson sharing at my former home church in Castle Rock, Colorado. And, uh, Randy prays for people for impartation, and it's powerful. And in and, and that week, there was probably over a 1,000 recorded healings. Angels were appearing. There was even pictures taken, and you could see 
angel's wings covering the crowd. I mean, it was powerful, weak. And Randy's praying over people for impartation, you know, just for at least. We're already seeing a lot of good miracles in India. We're getting ready to head back in the fall to do an outreach where Hindus and Muslims, a city where Hindus and Muslims are killing each other. Um, very unreached area. Um, I thought, perfect place to bring the Prince, prince of Peace. And, uh, but Randy prays over me, and everybody's, you know, the whole line, everybody's falling down, and they're shaking, and people are crying and weeping. Randy prays over me, and I'm just standing there like this. I didn't even, I was, didn't even feel it moving in my fingers, nothing. Uh, but I say, you know, I walk by faith and not by sight. So I say, Lord, I receive this by faith in Jesus' name. A few days later, I'm back home. My wife and I are at the gym, and my daughter and another pastor's daughter are playing in the house. She's probably nine years old at the time, because this was 2007. Um, and she's, they're playing in the house. We come back from the gym, and they were freaking out. I said, what's going on, you, you girls? My daughter says, we just saw a being walk through our house, and it was over two stories tall. And they, they were freaking out. I said, what did he look like? She said, he looked like Elvis. <laughs> I'm thinking, you're nine years old. How do you know what Elvis looks like? <laughs> I saw that angel. A short time later, took a picture of it, and he was staring at me in the mirror. He looked more like George Washington to me. <laughs> um, but we ended up, we headed off to India a week or so later, and we did an outreach in a city called Muradabad. And from the very first night, angels were appearing, Jesus was appearing, and this has become a regular occurrence ever since Randy laid hands on me for impartation. Angels and Jesus have been appearing in our outreaches. And it was, and uh, what happened, we had one lady, her name was Neelam. She's laying in a, a bed, dying of jaundice, swollen liver. And Jesus goes walking through her house, I mean, right through her bedroom door into her bedroom, reaches down, embraces her, and tells her to come to our meeting and she'll be healed. It's pretty good when you got Jesus going door to door for you to advertise your meeting where he's going to be healing people. And sure enough, she comes out and she's instantly healed and she tells us what happened. There was other lady, she's sitting out in the darkness, we have thousands of people coming forward to receive prayer. We pray a mass prayer, and this one lady didn't want to come forward. She had severe demonic mental torment and asthma. She just sat in the darkness, and out from the crowd walks a man with a white robe and nail scars in his hands, walks up to her. Her name was Vandana, and he touches her on the head and says, everything will be okay. She's instantly delivered from demons, and the asthma has gone. We had one person after another, hours and hours of testimonies for those four or five days we were there. We ended up seeing 11,500 people come to Christ. And by the end of that meeting, uh, the media came out, the television, the radio, the newspaper, they, and they were saying, this is the report, the true God has shaken our city. Thank God the angelic realm is active. It's here right now in Princeton and Cambridge and Minnesota. Amen? Let's finish with this last verse. This is the story of Jehoshaphat. If you, you read the whole story where a huge army came against Judah, and Jehoshaphat was a godly king, and he called for a prayer and fasting, the prophet spoke up in verse 15, says, he said, he said, the battle's not yours, it's the battle's the Lord's. And then Jehoshaphat sends out the praise and worship team. Look at what happened. Verse, 2 Chronicles 20, verse 22. See if this is not prophetic. I'm going to read it out of the Amplify for the, the day we live in. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments against the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against Judah, and they were self-slaughtered. 
I've been praying a lot. Lord, let your hand come on Washington, D.C. Lord, we loose angels to go to Washington, D.C. We loose angels to go to the state capital of Minnesota. We loose angels to begin to get involved in our nation. Start interceding and loosing those angels. There, a lot of them are unemployed. They're waiting for you for their command. They hearken unto the voice of his word to do his good pleasure. And they excel in strength. Are you ready? Let's, let's uh, close and let's pray. Um, we're going to pray for healing. But also, if you want to start to see the angelic realm active in your own life, and you want to steward this thing for the glory of God, not for your own glory, but for his glory, I want you to stand up right where you are right now. And I'm just going to pray uh, uh, a prayer for everybody standing. And I'm just going to just loose that the angelic realm becomes more active in your personal life and in, in your city. And as you begin to intercede and you understand these things that Jesus begins appearing, angels begin appearing, encounters, signs and wonders like you've never seen before. Are you ready? Just hold both hands out and just receive. Holy Spirit. I thank you for this hungry congregation, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for each and every person that's here right now. Lord, they want to steward this thing for the glory of God. And, Lord, they're not going to walk with that Western mindset that separates the two realms. The two realms are connected as one. And, Lord, I just release angelic encounters. Let them begin to take place, Lord God. Let them begin to take place. Divine protection as they go on trips, Lord God. As they share their faith, Lord, I thank you as they confess you before men. You're confessing them according to your word. You're confessing them before the angels of God. Let the angels of God be loosed in this place right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, if there's sickness or disease in this place right now, just like you've done in our meetings in India and Nepal on a regular basis, people feel hands going in their body, ripping out sickness, rearranging body parts. I speak a rearranging of that body part right now. I speak to the eyes. I speak to the kidneys. Be healed in the name of Jesus. We release uh, ministering angels to go forth. Holy Spirit, go forth. In Jesus' name, we just release your presence and your power in the name of Jesus. More in Jesus' name. Everybody say more, Lord. In Jesus' name, we release that right now. Heart condition. In Jesus' name, inflammation, go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you have to go right now. In the name of Jesus, cease right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak all that pressure on that heart, inflammation, go right now. In the name of Jesus, kidneys, pancreas, you're being restored to normal right now. Him, Just minister in this place in Jesus' name. Just behold Jesus right now. Let him come. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. invite you in this place, Lord. There's no separation between the invisible realm and the visible realm in this place. In Jesus' name. More, Lord. There it is. Presence of God going through some hands right now. That hand, that wrist. In Jesus' name. More. More. In Jesus' name. Blood pressure, you're being released from that blood pressure. It's coming back to normal. We speak peace to that body 
right now. Throat, be healed. In the name of Jesus, throat, you're coming back into alignment with God's word right now. In Jesus' name. It's hard to swallow. I thank you, Lord. It, that's opening up right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Whatever's going on, head, whether it's migraine or trauma to the head, is being released from it right now. Thank him. In the midst of worship, our most powerful meetings in India and Nepal have been not when I'm preaching, but when we're worshiping. And uh, that's when the angels show up in Jesus many times, and I never do get to preach. My wife says those are our best meetings when I shut up. So... <laughs> Because when we begin to worship, the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. That, that translation in the Hebrew for Psalms 22.3, it, literally, it means he literally dwells in the midst of those praises, people. That's what praise does and worship. When you can worship from your heart. Get ready for encounters. Some of you are just going to be, as you put on the praise and worship music in the middle of the night, maybe at the midnight hour when all hell is breaking loose, and you just start worshiping him, you're going to have encounters. In Jesus' name, the prison doors open, just like they did for the Apostle Paul. In the midst of that prison, an earthquake came. In Jesus' name, who do you think that was? Those were angels on assignment. It's all over the book of Acts. When the persecution began to intensify, so did the angelic realm begin to intensify. People were in that season right now. Develop a backbone, courage, because in the midst of it, the angels are saying, fear not. I just speak to every spirit of fear and panic, anxiety. I command you to go right now in Jesus' name. I loose you from worry and fear. No more is it going to be activating demonic power. We release a spirit of faith and boldness right now and courage to come on you that activates the miracle working power of Jesus, of heaven, of angelic presence right now. In the name of Jesus, any person with chest problems or tumor, I curse it in Jesus' name. I command it to dissolve right now in Jesus' name. Right where you're at, dissolve, die in Jesus' name. I curse you from the roots in the name of Jesus. Be no more cancer in Jesus' name. Release healing to those eyes. To those ears. Ears open back up. In Jesus name. Thank you Father. Just worship him for a little bit. Thank him for what he's doing. And what he's done. Whether you feel it or not. That, that, that expression of worship from the heart. Releases heaven in this place. In Jesus name. Lord we worship you for who you are. For what you've done, we praise you, Lord. You are so good. You were the ultimate sacrifice, Lord God. You paid the price for our sins. You were whipped and beaten beyond recognition. Crown of thorns shoved on your, your head. And Lord, so we could have peace of mind. We thank you. You paid the price for our complete salvation. We worship you. We bow before you, Lord, and we say you are worthy of it all, Lord God. You deserve all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. There's no one worthy. Lord, forgive us if we've ever tried to take the glory for what you've done, Lord. Lord, our sufficiency is from you. We are deficient. We lack everything, Lord God. But you are a sufficiency. We lack nothing because of you living in us. Thank you for calling us to your kingdom. Thank you that we get to be partakers, Lord God. Partakers of salvation. What an awesome privilege. To think that the creator of the universe would die for us. 
would be whipped and beaten beyond recognition so by his stripes we could be healed. Would take that crown of thorns so we could have peace. Wow, Lord. You are so awesome. Just want to ask, just stay in that place of worship to him. If there's anybody here, and, and if you were to die today, and you don't know where you're going to spend eternity, you don't know uh, Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've been religious. You've never surrendered to his lordship. And today you want to give your life to Jesus. You want the salvation he purchased if, if that's you, just right where you're standing, I'm not going to have you come forward uh, or put you on the spot like that, but if you're wanting to receive him as Lord and Savior, you, wanna, you want a personal relationship with him. You're tired of the religion. Or maybe you're backslidden, you've wandered away from him, but you want to come back to him today. Just raise your hand and say, yeah, I, I need prayer in that area. Anybody here? Anybody? I see that hand. Anybody else? Is there anybody else? Hallelujah. I see that hand. Okay. Those of you that are uh, raising your hand for this, um, let's, let's all pray together. Just say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, thank you for your salvation. Thank you for dying for me and giving me eternal life. I receive that gift of eternal life right now. I give you my life. Thank you for shedding your blood for me. And there's protection in that blood. It covers me now and protects me. I repent of all sin. And I say, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Be my healer. Be my deliverer. Be my provider. I give you my entire life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. I'll tell you, here's another thing about angels. They love to party. It says, when one sinner comes to Jesus... It says, all heaven rejoices. You, you just gave two of you here, at least two of you, maybe others, you just gave the, ex the, the angels an excuse to party some more in heaven. So <laughs> thank you, Lord. Let's thank the Lord for that. Amen. They're rejoicing. They're having a party up in heaven that some more people have been added to the family of God today. That's exciting. That's the most important thing. Amen. Well, I'm going to turn it back over to Pastor, Pastor Don, and, and uh, we're going we're to um, remain here for some prayer. Uh, if, if you need further prayer, we'll have the prayer team. Um, uh, or I'm sorry, I said Don. What am I saying? I'm, I'm lost in the spirit. Vern and Mary. I don't know where I got Don. Did anybody ever call you Don before? How did I call Don. I was really lost in the spirit here. I'm gone. <laughs> Pastor Vern. I said, what, what, what is that? You ever do that? I do that every now and then. So, so but we're going to remain here for prayer. If you need prayer, don't forget the table on the, out in the back. Um, uh, and check out the book table and uh, uh, what, all the stuff that's on there. God bless you. Pastor Vern. Thank you. I will dismiss you in Your about. Nickname is Don. Yeah. I will dismiss you in one minute. I have a question that I felt the Lord asked me to or told me to ask you sure. in front of everybody, and that's going to be a leap off point for the future. Okay. Of the people that Jesus has appeared to, yeah. that He touches, that get instantly healed, and all this, that, and the other. Yeah. How many of them told you that, or or you saw it, or however, that they were slain in the spirit, or they were blown across the? front of the stage or something like that uh, everybody's encounter has been different some of them have been taken what happens is we leave room for testimonies of people that are having encounters some of them are shaking violently and 
The next thing I said, well, what happened to you? Well, a man, handsome man on the stage with a white robe was waving at me, and I wanted to go hang out with him. <laughs> it was Jesus. You know, others, they're crying. The, the manifestations are always different. I can never say he does it this way. But there's some that literally, yeah, um, like talking about slain in the spirit, we had a lady who was a Hindu, and this is the city we're headed back to. We'll be there on the 3rd and 4th of June, Sunanagar. It's a Hindu holy city. She came there. She was dying of breast cancer. An old widow woman. She came to pay pilgrimage to the Hindu god, Shiva, the god of destruction, Kali, the goddess of death. Totally fearful, of, you know, she's going to die. No help. And somebody told her about our meeting she comes out of a temple hindu temple she comes to our meeting the presence of god is so strong during worship she's slain in the spirit she thought somebody came and pushed her down there was nobody there next thing she sees is jesus is reaching down pulling her back up and as he's pulling her up her breasts are instantly healed the oozing stopped and she said i no longer have fear of death I know where I'm going when I die <laughs> I mean so everybody's encounters different and uh, but yeah there's some of them receive powerful manifestations others may be something light so I ask it again okay <laughs> now that you went around the whole explanation and I'm putting you on the spot I realize oh, that right. um, how many do you think, is, is it a common thing that when Jesus touches them, they're slain in the spirit? Or is it a common thing that they're just healed and they're set free, they're delivered? They don't necessarily get what we call going down under the power or something like yeah. that. What, what's the common? Okay. A lot of them are not slain in the spirit. But they feel, they'll see Jesus. They feel as he touches them. They feel. They see him touching them. They feel his touch. They're instantly healed, but they're still standing upright. Yep. Others are yep. on the ground. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, like I say, it's always different. Yeah, I can never say. And I, I wouldn't even know what percentage as far as, because I don't keep track of that. But many of them say they, they feel it, and they see him, or they see the angels, or a lot of people, and they're not slain in the spirit. They just feel an invisible hand go in their body, rip the sickness out, or rearrange the body parts. Yep. And, and to be honest with you, I don't see what happens to them either because when there's four or 5,000 people yep. and we're praying a mass prayer, yep. I'm not seeing all the stuff that's happening. They're coming up and telling us what happened. Yep. So, right. Awesome. That's Thank you. Yeah, that was, that was good. <laughs> Thank you. All right, we'll talk about that a different time. Be blessed. Thank you for coming. Have an awesome day.